ladies a round of applause, everyone. They put on a spectacular showcase. All right, with me now is Coach Morgan. Coach Fortunate came, came down to the end there. You get the loss, but what an incredible atmosphere and moment for your girls. Yeah, it was a special moment for them. Like I said, starting out, you know, for some of these kids, this is the last opportunity they're going to get to play. And I'm thankful that, you know, for some of them on their home court, they got to play one more time on their home court. You guys set such a high bar here after this. This is the inaugural 5A, 6A girls game. What were just your thoughts on the level of play on both ends of the court and just what you saw out of these amazing ladies here? Um, obviously, you know, it's our, some of our top talent in San Antonio, and so we were excited to get that opportunity to coach them and, and to play with them a little bit. I mean, they're a super fun group of girls. Um, we knew we were going up against a lot of guard-heavy talent, too, so um, we competed and uh, we had fun. All right. Thank you very much, Coach Morgan. Let's give her and Team Black another round of applause. They put on an absolute great game today. All right, moving on here, we're now going to introduce Jenny Carnes. She is the president and CEO of San Antonio Sports, Jenny Carnes. And we're also going to introduce you guys to Judson District Athletic Director, Triva Corrales, to present our winning team, Team Gold here, with the Triva Corrales Championship Trophy. Jenny, here. Thank you, RJ. On behalf of our team at San Antonio Sports, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and supporting the inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game. Our fans were awesome. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on an incredible competitive game. Treva, come on up. It is my honor. I've been saying all day, we had two incredible games earlier in the first session. It was easy for us to name the trophies for this new basketball series. And for the 5A, 6A game, girls game, my good friend, Treva Corrales, nearly 400 wins in her high school coaching career. The first team from San Antonio to win a state championship in 2019. Took her Judson team to the state tournament five times incredible coach and incredible athletic director for the Judson ISD to present the championship trophy, the Treva Corrales Trophy inaugural year, Tina Camacho and Team Gold. All right, let's talk with Coach Camacho now. Coach, Incredible game. Talk about the effort here from Team Gold and what these ladies uh, accomplished here today. This incredible effort and uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. First of all, I want to thank um, San Antonio Sports because uh, putting these girls in the situation and letting them, letting them uh, play one last game in front of their fans and here in San Antonio, that's what it's all about. <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, same question that I asked Coach Morgan, just the atmosphere in this building right now and to see the level of play from both sides here on both, uh, both teams here for the ladies. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun for San Antonio basketball and I know it's going to just keep getting bigger and, and better and uh, we look forward from year to year to see it. What does it say about the level of play for the girls side when it comes to high school basketball in San Antonio? I just think that the, the, the level is, is it's building every year. I mean, look at, our, look at our March Madness that's going on now. You walk into a place and people aren't just watching the boys' games, they're watching the women's game. And I just think all over that the women's game is elevated. All right, Coach Camacho, let's give her and Team Gold another round of applause here. They take care of business, the 5A, 6A winners here tonight. All right, coming up now is our Trophy Impact Player of the Game. And uh, someone who's very familiar here for anyone, a Hoopers here in the San Antonio area, Miss Ryan Forstier. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so big round of applause there. As we all know, Ryan has taken her talents to SoCal, USC. So she's gonna be balling with Juju Watkins out there, right? Okay. <laughs> Ryan, just this is the last opportunity here for you to play with some of the best in the San Antonio area. What are your, what's going through your mind right now? Um, I mean, I'm happy we won, and I just wanna say thank you to everyone that came out. This is really big for women's basketball, and thank you to the coaches, and thank you to everyone who set this up, and thank you to God, too. And my family, they're all back there. Um. And how cool is it to go out in this way? You get the dub here, you get a big win. And again, you kind of led your team here. Just to go over the stat line real quick. 
<laughs> I'll let your cheering section go there. Uh, Ryan finished with 30 points, five rebounds, four assists. Talk about the effort here and to be able to do this with this group of girls. Um, I mean, I'm just really happy we won. I couldn't have done it with without them and my coaches. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank the other people. Like I couldn't have done it by myself. So yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, though, it could have been a co-impact player of the game. Taylor here had an amazing game. She's headed to UTSA. How cool was it to just hang out with Taylor and the rest of this team here? Uh, well, me and Tay played together in the summer. So getting to end off on a win with her and play with her for one last time, like really made my heart happy. So yeah, can we do co? Maybe? I we'll see what we do. Hey, you guys are going to have to do that for sure. <laughs> There we go. All right, guys, our trophy impact player of the game, maybe soon to be co-player of this game, Ryan Forcier from Brandeis High School. What a great effort. I think co. Here we go. Thank you very much, Ryan. Congratulations to Team Gold. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, we thank you again for joining us for the girls 6A, 5A. A two-point win for Team Gold and Coach Christina Camacho, 60 to 58. We're going to turn it over to our friends at KSAT, and we'll be back with the boys game in about 15 or 20 minutes from now. This is the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. the desk here inside Northside Sports Gym. I'm Mary Rominger, joined alongside Nick Mantis. Larry Ramirez is back at the station getting ready for instant replay, which will air after the night beat tonight. But first, Nick Mantis, we have to debrief what we just saw in that 5A, 6A girls all-star basketball game. It started with an honorary assist for Natalie Huff on Team Black, who was injured late in her senior season. Even Cameron Griffin got her 1,000 point, and then the game all came down to Ryan Forcier and Taylor Ross of Team Gold. Man, did they put on a show. You said my full name when we started this. I'm going to say <laughs> Mary Rominger. It was an absolute battle. Incredible performance from both teams as we saw that Forcier, at the end of the third quarter, only had 18 points. Then she went off for 22 points in the fourth quarter to end with 30 points, five rebounds, four assists. There's no reason why you wouldn't just already assume that she was going to be our player of the game willing her team to a 60 to 58 incredible nail biter at the end that defensive press that they had at the end for that last inbound for team black was the difference in this one coach Camacho told us earlier this week that she wanted to have that little bit more of that press she hinted at it she said I may press a little bit we're gonna see what happens and this is where it just comes in so crucial the final possession for team black Five Five seconds left. There's a traveling call. They get the ball back. Now it's an opportunity for them to make something happen. And what happens? That press gets into that height that the team Black had. Team Gold the entire week was saying, we got to worry about that height. We got to worry about what Ariana Robertson is going to do to us. We, what are we going to do going up against her? Well, one of those passes was a little bit off because a hungry badger is going to go for its food. It's going to get in here. They're going to get underneath those taller players. They're going to be ready to make sure that they're going to make sure to disrupt some of those field, and that's what happened in that last possession and there you have it a 60 to 58 game an incredible performance from these two teams we just saw beautiful recap nick Thank yeah you. that press ended up being the key difference maker all right coming up we have the prime time event the 5a 6a boys game both team gold and team black worked out for a few days this past week leading up to today's all-star game team black is coached by reagan's john hurst his team was working out at reagan high school and at the end of practice, Coach Hurst held a dunk contest to keep things fun. KSAT 12 Sports was there and caught up with Team Black amid their final preparations for tonight's primetime event. Yeah, super special. These last four years, I mean, I made great memories. So a lot of these guys I played the last four years, so it's kind of cool to cap it off to have a fun game, but also a competitive game. Yes, yeah, Jacob Stewart. How cool is it to, to be able to be on a team together? Yeah, it's, it's super cool because uh, we actually grew up together when we were younger, so it's, it's amazing to play with him again. At what age did you guys start playing together? I'd say 13 years old, probably. And I'm, we're, we're both 18, so yeah, came a long way together. I just feel like that's all God because he, he went to East Central, then he, he just moved. And to be able to play with him again, even though playing with him 
since I was in sixth grade, it's amazing. It's, just, it's all God. Well, I can't give too much, too much information, but uh, we're gonna play fast. We're gonna share the ball. Um, you know, none of us are very selfish. We're all very talented, and we're just gonna trust each other and um, trust ourselves. Definitely. Honestly, just having fun out there with them. You know, um, I'm used to going against them and not really liking them on the court. So just being able to smile and have fun with all them and play basketball this is really nice. We are so proud to be able to represent our families and our school and our, our athletic department and, and uh, community. There's really no words to describe it. To be coaching in the inaugural All-Star Game uh, is a huge honor, and, and we don't take it lightly. We've, we've really worked hard to try to make sure that these guys had a good practice plan each day but also tried to work hard, make sure they were having fun, something that we'll remember forever. Now let's take a look at Team Gold. This group of all-stars is coached by Brennan's Cody Calgill. That squad was practicing at Brennan this week, and KSAT 12 Sports caught up with the team to see how they were feeling and getting ready for one last game as high school seniors before moving on to college. It's just really uh, exciting, you know, to know like all my hard work paid off during the season, you know, and I get to just showcase my skills, you know what I'm saying, in front of everybody. So I'm, I'm really happy. How excited was your mom when she found out you're going to be an awesome? She was really happy. She was jumping to everything, you know, telling all her friends. So, yeah, she took right to Facebook, you know what I'm saying? So, like, she was really happy and everything. As of right now, I know my mom, my dad, and like, I think five of my sisters and my brother and uh, that's about it for now. I'm not sure. A lot of people have been texting me, so it's like I, a lot of friends and family. I'm not sure. I can't keep count, but at least at least 20. This year. You know, I think I think it means a lot because you know, growing up, it wasn't just my mom who was taking care of me. It was my friends' moms, my friends' parents who were helping bring me up and keeping me focused. And it's just really like it's amazing that I'm getting able to represent them on TV. And, you know, I just, it's awesome. Oh, this is unbelievable. I mean, just to be the honor of being um, picked to be one of the coaches with, with guys, Rudy Bernal, you know, Coach Hurst, Tina Camacho, like, just figureheads of the game in, in the city for the last 30 years is so awesome to be able to be picked to be in that same breath with those great coaches. To be able to be here with, with, the, with these awesome kids, a lot of them that I've known since they were, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and just kind of watching them grow up and develop and all that is such a blessing to be able to be around them for this event. some special guests joining me at the table but first we'll show you the final game in our list today it's game four featuring the senior players from class 6a and 5a the boys game is nearing tip off to conclude a very special day of basketball for the alamo city and the surrounding areas now getting to the special guest next to me i have lita nira from um, macarthur high school i have kennedy manning over here uh, from canyon high school and then cassia Sandoval from Harlandale. You three, we'll get to Ryan in a moment, but you three have some very special news to tell me. Where are you going to play next year? I'm going to play in Austin College. I'm going to play in Manhattanville College. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play at Franklin Pierce University. All right, awesome. So bring me through what you, um, Leah, what brought you to the decision to commit to your university? Um, basically, I just went and to view the school and it made me very comfortable throughout the other schools I have did visit. Um, the girls, I met with the girls, they were super nice and made me very comfortable and they gave me like the experience to do like inside basketball and outside of basketball and it just made me very comfortable and that's what I chose. Beautiful. Did you experience that same camaraderie at yours? Yes, for the most part. Um, another thing I would add is I've always wanted to leave home and experience new things so me going up to New York I feel like that's something to be individual about it and learn from that, so that's why I picked it too. And you, Kennedy, what brought you to your decision to uh, link up with your university? It was really the coaching staff. They were okay. very welcoming and they had really good communication with me a lot like better than any of the other coaches that I talked to. And it's a beautiful campus and not only that, but I've just always wanted to go somewhere far and go somewhere I've never been before and experience something new. All right, Ryan, way over there, you dropped a 30 piece in this 6A, 5A girls game. You were the MVP, I forgot what we call it, but tell me what you felt on the court tonight. Um, I mean, I was just really happy to play in such a competitive game and it was super fun to play out there, but we wouldn't have won if it wasn't for my teammates and for my coaches. So I'm just happy we came out with the win. 
And you're going to play at USC next year. We heard where they're going. USC, you're joining the Big Ten next year. How excited are you to be a Trojan? I'm super excited. I've been ready to go since I committed, so I got two more months. I'm really excited to go. And Juju Watkins, the best freshman in the entire nation, is a Trojan. Are you excited to play alongside her? Yes, I'm super excited to play. I'm just excited to play for an amazing team with yeah. amazing coaches and an amazing atmosphere, so I'm ready to go. What did you guys think of what you saw from Team Gold today? Um, they put out a show. They they started off aggressive. Y'all started off aggressive, pushed on us, and they deserve it. Competitive game. Talk about how it felt going down to the wire um, with Team Black. Uh, watching them play, I felt like it was what you're gonna expect when you watched it. Or being involved in it and just seeing it happen was really fun. Kennedy, how grueling was this matchup? I mean, it went down to the final possession. I was really thinking because I was like, they walked out and I saw like all those big girls and I was like. <laughs> I didn't expect nothing less like I've played against or with most of the girls so I knew that it was going to be a 100% competitiveness from second one to zero seconds. And guys let's turn around and see your jerseys. You guys get to keep these jerseys right? You guys get to keep these afterward? Nita, Manning, Sandoval, Borsier. I mean you guys are going to live on in San Antonio high school basketball history for the for the years and years to come. The first ever all-star game. Recap it in a few words for me. Um, it was fun. I'm competitive and just going out there to play against the best and the best and it was, it was fun. That's all I can say. Awesome. Well, it was so great. You guys have been a pleasure to watch throughout your high school careers. Very excited for what you have to come in the future. All right, that's going to be it from us here at the desk. Um, Texas Sports Production has the final game, the 5A, 6A boys basketball game for you tonight. And coming up right after the break will be them. And then tonight we have the night beat here on KSAT 12. To follow that will be instant resave instant replay so be sure to tune in all throughout the night right here see you later and welcome back here to Northside Jam fourth and final game it's the boys 5a 6a all-star basketball game as we are pleased to have in the booth with us tonight, Stan Leach, the athletic director of Bernie ISD, joining us. Coach, going to be a lot of fun for these kids, a lot of fun for the coaches, a last chance for these seniors to show out in front of their hometown. It is, and this is a great place to play, and they have done a tremendous job showcasing the best in San Antonio. Well, we had some great girls games. It's the uh, and the, uh, a good boys game earlier today, and one more game to go here. It's the 6A, 5A boys all-star basketball game. We'll have the starting lineups when we continue in a moment here on KSAT 12. Let's meet Team Gold. A 6'4 guard from Madison High School, number zero, Caden Cooper. A 5'11 guard from Harlandale, number one, Jonathan Regalado. A 5'10 guard from Harlan High School, number two, Kalen Hargrove. A 5'10 guard from Highlands High School, number four, Willie Gaskin. A 6'3 forward from Brandeis High School, number 11, Trevor Short. In the post, standing 6'3 from Lanier High School, number 15, Ismael Ortiz. A 6'3 guard from Stevens High School, number 21, Amare Parham. 
A 6 by forward from Smithson Valley, number 22, Jake Good. A 6 3 guard from Veterans Memorial High School, number 24, Gervais Mayweathers. A 6 7 forward from John Jay High School, number 32, Elijah Baldwin. And a 6 1 guard from Breckenridge High School, number 33, Isaiah Cardona. And now the gold starting lineup. A 6 1 guard from Southwest High School, number 13, Josiah McDonald. A 6 2 guard from Veterans Memorial High School, number 6, Devin McLeod. A 6 5 forward from Brennan High School, number 34, Cameron Walker. A 6'6 six, six forward from Canyon High School, number 23, Cameron Schreiber. And in the post at 6'8 from Clements High School, number 10, Trayvon Williams. The head coach from Brenham High School, Dakota Cowgill, assisted by Ian Ward and Jonathan Sanchez. And now it's time to meet the players representing Team Black, a 6'4 guard from Lee High School. Number two, Idafe Nakpodaya. A 6'3 guard from Reagan High School. Number three, Kenneth Manuel. In the post at 6'7 from Roosevelt High School. Number four, Randy Marshall. At four, six, three, from McCollum High School, number six, Anthony Soto. A six by four from Steele, number seven, Javon Tolliver. From Seguin High School, a six foot guard, number 21, John Jackson. From Holmes High School, a six, two forward, number 24, Isaac Martinez. A 6'2 guard from New Braunfels, number 32, Lance Beagley. In the post from Taft High School, standing 6'6, number 35, Tyrus Harris. A 5'9 guard from Southside High School, double zero, Christopher Regino. And now the Team Black starting lineup. A 6'1 guard from East Central, number one, Jacob Stewart. A 6'2 guard from Sotomayor High School, number zero, Elijah Hernandez. A 6'2 guard from Bernie Champion, number 14, Charlie Georgellis. From Reagan High School, a 6'6 forward, number 23, Aiden Richard. And a 6'6 post player from O'Connor High School. Number 22, Julian Barone. Head coach from Reagan, John Hurst. Assisted by J.J. Aguiano and Jason Schenefeld. All right, we'll be back with the opening tip. Appreciate the final game of our quadruple header, the 5A, 6A Boys All-Star Game, SA Sports All-Star Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back, final game of our quadruple header, the boys 5A, 6A. Bobby Stotzenberger along with Bernie ISD Athletic Director Stan Leach and also legendary basketball coach. We had Charlie Bogus on earlier, your old competitor, and you guys are amongst the winningest coaches ever in San Antonio. And so you've seen some all-star games, probably coached in a few. How do you get a team ready in three practices? Well, you don't. You uh, basically get them all organized, try to get a type of a routine so that everybody gets a chance uh, to play and, and be honored. Well, the tip is won by the black, Julian Barone from O'Connor as Elijah Hernandez has it for Team Black. Team Black moving right to left, front court to our left with the ball. Stewart has it stripped away and fast break is broken up by Hernandez. And Hernandez will pull up with a jump shot that's good. Elijah Hernandez 
with the bucket. Kid from Sotomayor, new program. Team Gold moving from left to right, front court to our right. Pass on the left side, Josiah McDaniel. Guarded out there by George Ellis, and a steal by Team Black, and her first slam dunk. Not with super authority, but enough to go in. Jacob Stewart makes it four zip Black. Well, early on, uh, Black is showing a lot of pressure and making it difficult for uh, White to set anything up. Three point attempt by McDaniel, no good. Black with the basketball, George Ellis. One of Stan's favorites, he's been a great one for champion as he will take a three point shot near the sideline. A little bit short, rebound, goal. Team Gold with the basketball. Walker cross court stolen by George Ellis. And that's what he does very well. He, he's a smart player on offense and defense. Here is a NBA range three by Cameron Schreiber out of New Braunfels Canyon, a little short. Still four zip black. That was an early that. heat that was check. A Richard, I should yeah. say. Aiden Richard with the shot. Now it's team a black ball again as Hernandez throws in the corner to Stewart. We mentioned Aiden Richardson. He owns the school record at Reagan for three-point shots. He misses his first here as this ball out of bounds off black. And five for five for Coach John Hurst. John Hurst, the head coach at Reagan, coaches the team black. Cody Kogel, the head coach at Brennan. There you see Coach John Hurst for the first time. Well, John, he already got in his rotation. He already got a new five in there with two minutes, and that's important to do. Trayvon Williams cut off on the baseline. Over to Walker. Walker throws it all the way to the wing and into the corner it goes finally. Jump shot left of the lane is no good. Crash for the rebound. Now a foul called as Cameron Schreiber tried to go up with it. Well, in these all-star games, it's real important because the parents are here and the coaches, and you really want to showcase everybody. And so I like how both coaches are starting out, getting them all in. Cody Kogel about to rotate. At least four for four. Schreiber will probably come out if he makes his free throw. He makes the first. Cody Kogel's Brennan Bears state tournament team last year. They lost a heartbreaker in this building to Stony Point in the regional semifinals when Stony Point hit a buzzer beater three. But uh, expect more from Brennan in the coming years. They were a young team. Well, he has already had a tremendous career. He's been there. 11 years, been the state tournament three times, it averages 25 wins a year, uh, and they've got a winner with him. Second shot, no good. Team Black with the basketball and a four to one lead. Long range three is no good. Jonathan Regalado from Harlandale gets the rebound and he'll take it across. Regalado flips it over to Mayweathers for the three air ball. Gervais uh, Mayweather's from uh, Veterans Memorial. They were a state tournament team the last two years in a row. Well, they have done a tremendous job. They have been in the regional finals three, uh, three years in a row and won it twice. Team Gold, only a point, no buckets made yet, but they get a big rebound there and it's running the break. Mayweather stolen by Team Black, back the other way for the miss layup, but Right there is a follow attempt. Once, twice, second one blocked. Tyrus Harris couldn't get it to go. A little sloppy here in the early going as they throw it all over the uh, gym right now. And then finally in the lane, a missed shot by Tolliver. Rebound gold, wow. Well, you can't say they're not playing hard. Uh, both teams are having fun and they're really getting after it early. They move it around quickly for an open three that is no good. Rebound. Hey guys, I, I was about to say the intensity down here is at a top-notch level. Unfortunately, it's, uh, not some shots not going in at this point. Not yet. Not uh, yet. Isaac Martinez from Holmes misses the three ball there. Gold back the other way, and Mayweather's able to float one down. 
four to three. Bigley, two star athlete from uh, New Braunfels, misses the runner in the lane. Left wing now, open three. No. Loose ball. Back to Baldwin, who will take the jump shot. Good. Elijah Baldwin from John Jay. He is also a two sport athlete. Tight end, defensive end, and six foot seven forward for the Mustangs. As we have a foul on the play, 319 to go. In the first quarter, gold five to four with the lead. You're watching the SA Sports All Star Basketball game on KSAT 12. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Coach Stan Leach, RJ Marquez from KSAT 12 down on the court. Intense, not a lot of scoring yet, Coach, but they're getting after it. Not yet. You know, everybody's getting in. Both coaches are doing a great job. And so it's kind of like a hockey line, five in, five out right now, getting their foot. Double zero, Christopher Regino from Southside on the dribble drive. Backs it out to Nokapudi, Nokapudia, and now a dribble drive into the rack, and John Jackson from Seguin puts it in. We got so many two sport guys. He was a football player as well. As he skies and may have committed the foul there. Well, that two sport, that's why they're an all star game. That means they're athletes. Uh, and that means their school is getting the best out of them. And most of the time, two sport athletes, basketball, football, and ba uh, baseball, and football are a big combination, too. Free throw by Gervais Mayweathers is good. Yeah, guys, and if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Jackson led the area in scoring this year. Upper 20 uh, point score, so he can definitely fill it up. He can. Uh, once he gets a few minutes, uh, he'll be filling it up. Well, Mayweather's ties the game with the first free throw, misses the second to 6 6. Drive to the basket and a lay in by Anthony Soto from McCullum High School. 8 to 6. Team goal with the ball and a steal in midcourt. All the way, John Jackson. There's your athlete, coach. There he is. John Jackson with the Matador dunk. 80 to 8, 8 10 to 6, rather. Rebound by Regino. He wears double zero. Hernandez wears zero, so you got a zero and a double zero on the same team. And Randy Marshall from Roosevelt forces one up and in. He's six foot seven, and we have a blocking foul called on the floor. Went 153 to go. Yeah, the referees are doing a good job, get, you know, getting this game and okay, letting them play. Uh, Johnny Sorrell, he's a great San Antonio referee. We've got the three of the best here today. Inbound for Team Gold. And Jackson nearly had another steal. Yeah. I saw him a few times in the last couple of years in our district. Uh, he was their go-to guy there at uh, Seguin. Inbounds pass comes to Amari Parham out of Stevens. Now a nice pass underneath, and a, that was, shot was challenged and maybe blocked by Regino from Harlem, from Southside. We're down to 133 to go, and another steal for the Gold All Stars. Open three, no, from Parham. Rebound, Team Black. 12 to six. Black with the lead. Jackson's going to put up the three, no. Rebound, Team Gold. Right corner three, wide open, and there it is. There it is. Nice spot up three by Isaiah Cardona from Brackenridge High School. Well, that that's a great pass, too. That's, that's uh, hard to do in an all-star game to give that up, and he found him, and he had his feet set and knocked it down. Regino misses the three. Team Gold on the attack, and... Ball lost out of bounds, but tapped out by Black. 
Early on, I can't compliment these coaches enough. I mean, they're they're getting everybody in real early, so they all feel and they kind of get warmed up, get the jitters out. Inbounds pass goes into Williams. This shot blocked out of bounds. Trayvon Williams, who a tall kid from Clemens, six foot eight, played for Robert Bell's Clemens Buffaloes. Who won a state championship as a player with Fox Tech? Yes, sir. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Charlie Bogus remembers who beat them, who they beat in the regional finals. Yes, he Alma does. Ice Mules. Yeah, and we were in that district too. Uh, his uh, senior year. Jump shot, free throw line extended right shot, no good. Battle for the rebound, and Gold comes away with it. Three can tie here. But a double team in midcourt and a steal, and Jacob Stewart all the way lays it in. Team Black, 14 to nine. Can they get a shot off? They will, but it's no good by Williams. That ends the first with Black leading gold, 14 to nine. You're watching the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back here to Northside Gym. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Stan Leach, RJ Marquez down on the court. Black with a 14 to nine lead in this final All-Star game. We got a jumper in the lane and it's good for Kate Cooper, Madison Maverick with his first two points of the night. Kenneth Manuel from Reagan. Now in the lane, bank shot, good for Lance Beagley. He played for the New Braunfels Unicorns. They had a great season this year. Oh, they did, and they will do a great job going down into 5A. Dribble drive and a foul on the floor. 16 to 11, a five-point edge here for Team Black. You know, guys, it looks like uh, both teams starting to get their uh, legs under them a little bit. It was a little uh, helter-skelter there in the uh, first quarter, but uh, starting, to see, uh, starting to see both of these teams come around a little bit here. Great basketball players adjust. Here's a dangerous in-court in inbound pass that Beagley steals and gets fouled going up. And Beagley was a receiver for the Unicorn football team, and he went up and high-pointed that one. He, he looked like he had done a few drills. And, you know, just, just on that comment, you know, these guys have not been in the gym as much as they were during the season, and so uh, it, it takes them a little bit to, to get back custom uh, to, to game conditioning. Lance Beagley, first free throw, no good. Jacob Stewart and John Jackson with four apiece so far for the Black All-Stars. Well, the black team, they are, it's all defense right now. They're doubling the ball. Uh, you know, Coach uh, <laughs> Hurst, he's got them playing hard, and, and they're doubling the ball and making it difficult on the goal team. Open three here for Schreiber is no good. Rebounded by Team Black. Isaac Martinez from Holmes with the rebound. He thought about three, instead throws it in the lane, and a jump hook is good for Tyrus Harris, 6'6", post player from Taft High School. Oh, he did a good job of, of you know, making presents, getting in there, and made it almost impossible not to give him the ball. You're absolutely right. John Hurst's team has been super aggressive defensively I mean, and has he, created opportunities. He has. They're doubling the ball, and you can tell they've just told him, say, hey, just double. <laughs> Leave your guy and double. Inbound for team goal. They get it in in time. Right side baseline and then an open three on the wing is an air ball. Nine to, 19 to 11. Black with the ball and the lead. And they turn it over. Team gold runs the break. Down the floor. <laughs> Behind the back mistake turns into a tip in for Josiah McDonald. He stayed in the right spot. He missed the lay-in, but he was right there for the rebound put back. Bigley the other way. He'll attack the rack and get fouled. He has shown some good athleticism, <laughs> hadn't he? He, I really, mean, he really does. Uh, uh, I like what he did there on the steal, and then I like where he went from coast to coast there. Lance Bigley, one of the best really overall athletes 
in the greater San Antonio area. Well, they had a great year, and you're only as good as your best player, and so he had a lot to do with that great year. Bigley, now two out of three from the line with four points. 6.20 to go here in the second. Team Black with a 20 to 13 lead as Bigley will add another point to it. Come out of the game now, replaced by Anthony Soto from McCullum. You know, I also want to compliment, you know, they're all standing up, all coaches are participating, and and everybody's having a lot of fun. We've got a great crowd. It's just a great atmosphere for an all-star game. Caden Cooper brings it up. Madison Maverick throws it out to the wing on the left side, and an open pass, wide open, but a Mayweathers can't finish. Well, they let them have steps, too. They, they, they let that go. McLeod gets the steal. He'll go up with the left hand and in. Devin McLeod, another Veterans Memorial Patriot, gets the bucket, his first two. Now they're setting up some pressure in the backcourt. Pass to the middle to Randy Marshall. And he is put on the floor. Well, and that's a good way to generate some offense is just double the ball because, you know, neither team has had a chance to work on uh, attacking uh, any type of pressure. So uh, the defense has the advantage on that. I butchered her name earlier. Number two from Lee High School is Adafe Nakpodia. As he's back in the game now. Missed by Team Black as McLeod throws it underneath. And not the first time, but the second time is good for Elijah Baldwin. He has four points. Little run here uh, by Team Gold. Well, and that's good, and that's what we need to keep this uh, game fun. Yeah, guys, interesting story about Elijah Baldwin. I actually saw him at the airport the day that he was on a recruiting trip to El Paso for their new head football coach there, Scotty Waldron. So I saw Elijah, talked to him for a little bit, and uh, next thing we know, he's uh, committed to go play uh, football at UTEP for the minors. And well, the they got a good one. The Sun Bowl is one of the most beautiful stadiums you'll ever see. The setting there is just tremendous. A foul on foul on uh, Caden Cooper. Oh no, that was on Christopher Regino. Inbound for Gold. Left corner three is no. Double team in the backcourt, and they create a turnover. Well, about the time we think one team is ha has a run over the other, here they come, and that's what uh, Gold's doing. They, they started attacking. They started doubling the ball. There's a lot of athleticism on the floor right now. Cooper drives in. Pull-up jumper is good for Caden Cooper. Well, all these guys are come from a lot of good programs, and they certainly have seen talent and speed of their opponents. But when you have everybody has talent and speed, that that speeds the game up even for all stars. It does, and you can tell uh, all those jitters we thought we had early. They're they're gone by now. Everybody's been in the game. Everybody's had a chance to touch the ball, and, and it's evident. You know, it's, there's a difference between having two, maybe three players on the floor with great, great quickness. But when you're trying to make offense against five guys that have great quickness yeah. and length, that makes it tough. There's 15, because especially when you're in the 5A, 6A game, there's some great talent out here. Dribble drive and up and no good, but a follow for number 32, Elijah Baldwin. A football player has six points. He leads the gold now. You now, tip commit. <laughs> well, he not only was he a football player, he was a two-way player. He played yeah. tight end and defensive end, and he never left the field. Hey, that's smart coaching. Uh, you know, we, we two platoon just, but a few, we go both ways. By the way, Gary Gutierrez, his football coach, is 
here at the game work in the concession stand here tonight. Here's a jump hook by think, Jake Good. I think he used to coach at Loveland. He's a, he's got good West Texas roots and he's done a tremendous job there with the John Jay athletic program. Check that. That was Julian Barone with the basket. And Trayvon Williams from Clemens gets his first bucket. We're tied again at 23. Well, Coach Bell and Coach McConaughey, uh, you could tell that uh, he used some of those uh, post moves oh. they've been teaching. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jacob Stewart falls bank. Bank shot three. Nice move again by Baldwin. As we have a foul on the floor, 317 to go. And it's Team Black 26 to 25. You're watching the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. We said Gary Gutierrez not only coaches football, the athletic coordinator. There you see him with the cap and the JJ uh, pullover. Gary Gutierrez also working the concession stand. Too, that's leadership. Uh, Stan Lane's got him doing it all here. That's why they're special. Uh, the fans realize they had the we had the camera on him too. R.J. Marquez. He deserved it. Has a special guest down on the court as Jacob Stewart drains a three for Team Black. Yeah, that's right, Bobby. Coach Lyndon Hamilton here, Reagan High School coach, very successful coach. Coach, you coached the All-Star game for the football team, so now we're seeing this on the basketball court. What Talk about just this event in general and San Antonio Sports putting this on. Oh, just an amazing event, you know, allowing the, the basketball community and, and all of our kids to, to have the exposure, you know, the first annual San Antonio Sports Association All-Star game, you know. Our, our very own Coach Hurst has the opportunity to coach it. They've been in our gym all week long, got to know a few of the kids. Um, just an amazing event and, and just great, great opportunity for these, these programs and all these communities to come out and watch the kids get out there one more time. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. And uh, you mentioned Coach Hurst. I was watching him earlier uh, during one of the timeouts. He's engaged, man. He's getting his guys ready to go doing hockey line shifts. <laughs> He's got a whole game plan set up. Does that surprise you there from Coach? For sure. All week long in the gym getting after it like it's a playoff game or a district game, you know. Um, just a great week of work and, uh, you know, Sunday night, watch a little high school sports in San Antonio. It's an amazing event. Coach, last one. You see a lot of these guys also on the football field as well. How cool is it to see some of these two sports stars, guys like Elijah Baldwin, uh, Jackson there versus Seguin, just different guys across the area? For sure. You know, multi-sport kids, you know, if, if they can do it. Uh, we as high school coaches, we want to do everything that they can. And to see these guys come out and do it in multiple, you know, multiple facets and getting after it, um, uh, just hats off to all these guys for balancing their time and prioritizing their academics and the athletics. And what an amazing game. Tight game, you know, tied up right here, right before half. Uh, it's going to be a fun night. All right, Coach, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. Coach, appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, guys, back to you guys. That was Lyndon Hamilton, the head football coach at Reagan, as we get a long three shot by Jacob Stewart. During that interview, he hit a three-pointer, and uh, George Ellis, no, excuse me, that's not, uh, that is uh, Aiden Richards, sorry. He is the all-time leader for Reagan, right on cue. His athletic coordinator's doing an interview, he says, I gotta get me a three to impress him, as Baldwin answers with a bucket. Back and forth now, coach. You bet, and there Charlie found, just did what Charlie does, he found the open guy. Wow, they, they've picked up the pace, and after a 14-9 first quarter coach, now we're at 32-31. Well, you know, a lot of that had to do, they went two two minutes, they, they started rotating. Well, now they've all been in the game, they've all got a feel, and they all kind of know that everybody's doubling the ball, and so they just need to, you know, reverse the ball, and somebody's open. Jacob Stewart from East Central up to 11 points. He a averaged 18.4 a game for the Hornets, who were a playoff team out of a very tough district and nearly beat Lake Travis in round two. Second free throw, no good. It's going to be uh, Team Black basketball here, Coach. They got a two-point lead with 105 in a high scoring second quarter. Yes, they gave us what we wanted uh, that second quarter. 
Tolliver took the inbounds, and now it's uh, Bigley back in the game. Bigley showing his stuff, trying to get to the basket, and then turns around and banks it in. As he saw when he spun around on the pivot, nobody was there, Coach. He said, what the heck, I'll take it. And now we know why uh, New Bromble's won so many games. <laughs> Black gets a steal, He's Tolliver. He's a good one to have on the floor. Up the floor to Manuel. Kenneth Manuel from Reagan gets blocked. Black with the ball again, though, as Stewart puts it up in traffic. No good. Now 25 seconds to go. Four-point lead for Black. Gold with the basketball on the attack. And are they going to get travel? Yeah. Oh. That's a travel everywhere except the NBA. That's a travel everywhere but the NBA. <laughs> Let's see. We Let's get see. a good look at it. Once, yeah, yeah, I think so. There's no Euro step about that. No. Hey, but he was he was going downhill. Good for him. Final possession here, perhaps Bigley. Let's see what he does with it. Throws it into the corner. Here's Tyrus Harris for three. What a way to end it here for Team Black. And the new Bromble star even gives it out. Great assist there with him. R.J. Marquez is going to have Coach uh, John Hurst as it's a 38 to 31 halftime lead. As John Hurst has his team black out in front here. All right, guys, we got Coach Hurst here. All right, Des. Oh, good. All right. John uh, Hurst. You know what? Coach Coach Leach is up there singing your praises. Oh, obviously. He's the best. The godfather. <laughs> Bobby, there we go. Yes. Uh, fun environment here. Just talk yeah. about the first half, your thoughts as you guys uh, take the lead into halftime. Oh, my gosh. We're, it's so fun. Uh, two teams full of a lot of talented young men. All of them been well coached and so much just individual talent. I thought it took a little while for both groups to kind of get into the rhythm of the game, get into the flow a little bit. I think it will uh, start a little faster in uh, the second half. But it's a, it's a great group. It's, it's been really fun. Just talk about this environment, Coach. You know, the quadruple game here, you guys are closing things out. The fans, the family, and all, these guys being able to play in front of all the, these people here and their friends. Well, it's an awesome environment, and everybody at SA Sports and KSAT and all of these incredible sponsors. Look, look what you've done. The first one ever, uh, and to have this kind of turnout and this kind of atmosphere. And we've had three incredible games. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty big shoes to live up to in the last game of the night. Uh, but I think both groups uh, have guys that are uh, that are up to the task. We we feel so grateful to be here. It, it's amazing. We got parents, we got family members, and then you know incredible cheering sections over there. It it, it just is. It's what an All Star game should be. Okay, and we're, we're we feel so blessed to be a part of it. All right, thank you very much, Coach, and best of luck You're here right. in the second half. All right, thank you. We'll see you guys coming Team out. Team Black, 38 to 31 at the half. This is the San Antonio Sports All Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. The Black All-Stars leading the Gold All-Stars 38 to 31 at the half. Let's take a look at Crisis Human Performance first half highlights. As the teams really were helter skelter in the first half, we, uh, first quarter in particular, as we we saw a lot of turnovers. Jacob Stewart, who leads the Black with 11 points, with the dunk there, but not to be outdone. As John Jackson gets his shot at it. And then the bank shot three by Jackson. But Gold uh, came back. Elijah Baldwin's been big with eight first half points. And then another three from the corner. That one from Tyrus Harris, a six foot six post player, spotting up in the corner with the three ball. It all adds up to a Team Black 38 31 lead. We'll be back with more from Northside Gym in just a moment. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Back at Northside Gym, Team Black 38, Team Gold 31. Our first half stats here. Well, the score's wrong, but the rest of the stats are right. Our three-point percentage is a little cattywampus, but uh, Coach, the main thing in that game, in this game so far, is 24 for black in the second, 22 for gold. The pace picked up, and 
Some of those turnovers you see on the bottom of your screen there had a lot to do with that. Oh, they did, and, and they created some offense by doubling the ball. And then everybody started getting comfortable, and they looked like the all-stars they are. Both teams starting to get acclimated to this game. It should be a fun second half. Seven-point edge for Team Black. We'll take our final timeout, and we'll be back with the final half of basketball on this great day of a quadruple header, the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're here with Coach Cobill to talk a little bit about his team's effort. Team Gold, you guys go into halftime trailing a little bit, but Coach, talk about uh, the, your squad's efforts. Yeah, really like the way that we came back and battled. We got down about um, 10 at one point. Um, kids played hard, got on the glass, gave us some good opportunities in that front. I mean, both, both teams playing hard, fast-paced game. Uh, definitely still think we're in it and have a great shot. When it comes to all-star games, sometimes there's a little bit of nervousness. Everyone trying to get their feet under them a little bit. Do you feel like your guys kind of settled in here a little bit? Absolutely. I thought, I thought they came out a little nervous. I thought both groups came out a little, you know, just trying to feel their way through the game. But, um, yeah, definitely found the rhythm as we went. All right, Coach. Uh, what are you expecting to see here in the second half from your squad and also from uh, the inaugural here this first time that we see the 5A, 6A boys game on this court? Uh, just really good players getting up and down the court, making plays, playing hard, uh, playing the right way. All right, thank you very much, Coach Kogel. Back to you guys. Thank you. Coach Cody Kogel. Good job. Brennan High School. He, he still looks like he's maybe in his 20s, but he does have a son, Camden, that is a, he a star player at Brennan on that great Brennan squad. Well, he, he's gifted with uh, good genes there. He <laughs> looks young. That's good for him. Stay young. That's it. You this know, I, game hey, will keep you young. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm older now, Stan, but I make up for it with my lack of maturity. No, I'm telling you, and that's, that's all that matters. Maturity's overrated. It is for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stan, what do you expect in this second half? A, a lot of what Coach Kogel said, just two athletes getting after it. What do you got to do to win the game? Well, uh, of course, it's funny looking at the minutes. Uh, it's been a true hockey line uh, for uh, Coach Hurt's team. And then uh, uh, Coach Kogels, they've they've got their starters playing more minutes than the others, and so they they did that probably to try to make it a game. Jackson gets fouled going up, went to the floor pretty hard. The first basket of the second half for Team Gold from Caden Cooper. Foul this time on uh, Cameron Walker, a Brennan Bear, and so Mr. Seguin, John Jackson. What an athlete he is. He is. At the free throw line, a little short. Jacob Stewart had 11 points in the first half for Team Black, leading their scoring. Elijah Baldwin with eight for Team Gold. Second free throw by John Jackson is good. Well, what impressed me at halftime is how uh, Team Black, they all played literally evenly. Nice pass underneath and a finish by Trayvon Williams. Trayvon, uh, what, the tallest player on the floor, and that might be a sign of things to come for Team Gold. Yes, and you know, they're doubling the ball. They're trying to do some scrambling, not make it so easy. Regino. This pass goes off of Randy Marshall and out of bounds, so a turnover there by Team Black. Team Gold down by four with seven minutes to go here in the third. Cooper. Cooper's been impressive in this game, too. He has. Oh, a spin move. Unfortunately for Cameron Walker, his, his ankle gave, gave out a, a little bit on him there and he fell to the floor. Well, it looked like maybe even there was a wet spot because he just, you know, he really slipped there too. This is for Virginia from Southside High School, bringing it up. Gives it back to Jackson who stops in the lane and gets landed on a bit. It should be on the floor there. I think. Cameron Walker already, with, did they say fourth personal foul? That didn't seem to, wow, that's a lot. And so he'll sit for a while. 
He played for Coach Kogel at Brennan. Team Black trying to get it inside, but a ball goes to the floor, and here comes Team Gold. Baseline drive, Trevor Short to the top of the key. Wide open three, and it's good for Josiah McDonald. He's got five points. He averaged 26 a season for the season for Southwest. The Dragons were an outstanding team this year as well. There's a floater in the lane that's no good for Regino. Rebound, Team Gold. They can take the lead here, Coach. Tough shot. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Kate Cooper. Oh, hey, that's the one you say, no, 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 yes. That's right. And you bragged on him the last possession, and you're right. He is, you know, Gold has had a good run here once we get in the second half. Adafi Nakodia with the miss. Rebound. Team Gold, they get it down the floor quickly for an easy lay-in for Trevor Short, another two-sport star at Brandeis. It's amazing how many guys are both two-sport two players in this game. Just, truly, and not only two-sport players, but really good two-sport players. In I, I like what you said. Not only two-sport, uh, both sides of the ball yeah. <laughs> most of the time. And I love it when coaches do play, uh, play them on both sides. And it you is. get a good player, don't sit him. Yeah, guys, we saw Trevor Short uh, wreak havoc on quarterbacks uh, <laughs> this yes, past season uh, for Brandeis. Right now, that drive, though, the baseline, that kick out to McDonald uh, was some pretty good stuff there from Trevor. Gold with a 42 to 39 lead. This young man, Kate Cooper, had the hot hand, but he hands it off to McDonald for an NBA range three. And now Josiah McDonald starting to heat up for Team Gold. Well, Team Gold, they, they have come up. They woke up, basically, and uh, they're doubling. They're getting rid of the ball, and they're beating them down court, too. And all of this in a, just a few minutes of this yes. second uh, half. Cooper again, off to Short. Short with a floater, no good, and makes it. Just gave it, just patted his stat there, Coach, to get a rebound and a putback. That's how you get those doubles. Guys, this is a 16 to 1 start. Wow. In this third quarter. Team Gold coming out on fire. Team Black tries to answer with an Aiden Richard three. No good. All the way down the floor, broken up by Aiden Richard. And wow, what a start. Well, that was a hot group, and uh, they're, they're standing up and making sure they know how much they appreciate it. They've got an eight point lead. So, Team Gold. As RJ said, a 16-1 run and wide open for the slam dunk is Elijah Baldwin. He's got 10 now. A 10-point lead. Talk about erasing a deficit. Yes. As Stewart forces the issue. And then his teammate, Julian Barone, with the follow-up. Barone. 15 points, six points, and 8.2 rebounds for, I think, the surprise team of the region in 6A for the O'Connor Panthers. They made it all the way to the regional championship, upsetting Lake Travis in the regional semis in overtime. Well, they got hot right at the right time. Uh, not only, of course, having great players like that, but good, great coaching, and, and uh, they almost pulled it off. Barone makes the second free throw. He now has three points. And it's 49-40. As Gold has the ball. Top of the key three. No good. Rebound. Team Black. Aiden Richard runs it up. Pull up off the glass is no good. And this will go out of bounds. And we'll take a timeout with 3.45 to go in the third. Team Gold 49. Team Black 40. This is the SA Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Black off and running, Stan, in this second half. They have been shooting the ball well, and they've been getting to the basket pretty easily so far. Yeah, I tell you, old Team Gold came out here at halftime and just looks like a whole different group. Team Gold, after trailing Team Black 38-31, now lead 49-40. 
And with the possession. And ball loose, and Team Bat Black will pick it up. That is Javon Tolliver from Steele. Over to Harris. Now an NBA range three that's short from Isaac Martinez. Rebound Team Gold again. On the attack, and that ball may have been partially blocked. Long down court pass. Tolliver has it in the lane, puts it up no good. Fights for the rebound, but get it, gets it taken away. As Gervais Mayweather's back in, he'll pull up with the three. Yes. Yeah. Gervais Mayweather's San Antonio Vets now has six points. Which Team Black's got to make a move here pretty soon. Yes, uh, they're going to have to do it on defense. I think you'll probably start seeing them just uh, more scramble, double the ball each time, and just try to speed them up a little bit. Coach Cody Kogel about to go five for five again. As Kenneth Manuel from Reagan at the free throw line. Scoreless so far tonight. The second half, Team Gold, whoever he's put in has played well. Uh, it's just been a, a big turnaround. Well, he's kind of turned them loose a little bit. They're, he has. They're, they're freestyling a little bit, but it's working with their athleticism. Guys, we just saw uh, Mayweather make that shot there. To me, I cannot believe how good Veterans Memorial has gotten in the amount of time that they've been there. They have really become a uh, San Antonio area powerhouse led by guys like Mayweather's and, of course, uh, Devin McLeod, his uh, teammate on uh, Team Gold. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, they, uh, in Region 4, they played for the Region 4 championship three years in a row, got beat by champion, uh, and I guess that, what would that have been, 22, and then they won it in 23 and won it in 24, and, and they'll be back again. Uh, great coaching, and uh, they've got a few players over there, don't they? They do, and uh, tell you what, they Steve Pettis has done a great job there with yes, he has. with vets. He spent some time in SAISD with Coach Huey at Brackenridge. Well, he their girls program and. Uh, Treve is doing a fantastic job with all their athletics, but uh, basketball uh, is really uh, doing well. Gold with a 52-41 lead. That's the 32nd timeout that was taken by Team Black as Gold will try a three from the uh, corner. And Trevor Short. Little drive and kick there. That's a linebacker defensive end, by the way, taking <laughs> threes from the corner. Up the floor to Manuel. At the top, Martinez back on the wing to Manuel. This is on the three. Here comes Caden Cooper again. Watch out. And he, oh, what a nice pass yeah. underneath. And an and one for Trayvon Williams. But that was all Caden Cooper to set that up. Coach, the way he was able to hold the ball. Watch this. Yeah. And you have to challenge Cooper if he goes up with it because he's been making baskets tonight. He's just a tremendous player and creator. Six four guard from Madison. Well, Team Gold got in this the same way Team Black did in the first half, just by doubling and getting on turnovers. And so... For Team Black to get back in this thing, they're going to have to start trapping and trying to get more possessions. Regino, nice pass underneath and the finish from John Jackson. And get John Jackson involved again. 54-43. Cooper again, runner the short. And who's it out on? Nope. Yeah. Trayvon Williams tried to save it in. Inbounds pass comes to Anthony Soto. Back to Regino. Regino gets double teamed in mid court. Ball loose for a moment, but picked up by Randy Marshall, who throws up a ah. wild shot that goes. Randy Marshall from Roosevelt. 
threw up a prayer and it went, and then Team Gold turns it over on offense. Well, he uh, he called it. He called Glass on the run. 18 to two for a period there in the to start the quarter for Team Gold. Here they are on the run again, and wide open to the basket is Trevor Short. They're beating them down the floor, Coach. Yeah, it's it's just a whole say, whole different group. Pull up three by Virgino, no good. Here comes Team Gold again, running and gunning. Trevor Short once more, nope. And the rebound by Randy Marshall. And we have a foul on the play with 39 seconds to go. Guys, a couple of great looks there from Devin McLeod. I'm standing on the opposite end, and his vision, uh, his court awareness, and playmaking ability on display right now. Well, you're right. You know, those uh, veteran Memorial players, there's a reason why they've been to the state tournament the last two out of three years, and we're getting to see it showcase tonight. So Randy Marshall, 6'7", post player from Roosevelt with the green shoes. Look at those yeah. guys. Those are nice. Those look like my old white shoes after I mowed the grass when I was 12 it's, years old. They look good. Didn't know I was styling that long no. ago. Mom would be really mad when I came home and those shoes were green. <laughs> those are new white shoes. Remember, we used to wear white shoes back oh, in the day. Yes. yes, we did. Yeah, you're supposed to put the old shoes on to go cut the grass. That's right. Sometimes you forgot when you're 12 years old. Didn't have time. <laughs> Randy Marshall makes the first free throw, and then we get a lane violation. And so uh, no bucket there on the uh, second free throw by Marshall. Well, Team Black, they need every point to get back in this for the fourth quarter. Yeah, you can't be having those type of mistakes. Here's Team Gold with a 10-point lead and a near steal, but Marshall gets it and puts up the shot no good. Still by, up, oh, ah. still and still back, and then a whistle, 21 seconds left. That is five, so free throws here for Team Black and Anthony Soto from McCollum goes to the line. Well, I've bragged on them once, but these uh, officials from the San Antonio chapter have just done a great job, and it uh, it takes a team to, to pull off an all-star game, and uh, Sarah Nell, uh, Mitchell Williams, and Michael Shoemaker. Johnny's an old pro, and they've done a great job tonight. Soto makes both free throws, cuts the lead down to eight, but Team Gold right back. They are quickly getting up the floor, Coach, and quickly getting good shots. I mean, it's that simple. They're going downhill, and they're just beating them to the basket, beating them down court. Elijah Baldwin, I think already an early candidate for player of the game. We've got a few out here, especially wearing gold this second half. He's got 11. Josiah McDaniel has eight. Trayvon Williams, six. Aiden Cooper, eight. It's been kind of balanced. But Baldwin leads the way. Two free throws there gives him 12. Ten-point lead again. Yeah, Elijah is very quick in the paint. That's one thing I've noticed. His uh, reaction, getting up, grabbing rebounds, just uh, being very active in the paint. Three to end the quarter. It's no good. He does. And after three, Team Gold 58 and Team Black 48. You're watching the SA Sports High School All Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. Welcome back here on KSAT 12. We at Texas Sports Productions, we're glad to team with KSAT 12 once again to bring these all-star games to you. I'm Bobby Stotzenberger, joined by Stan Leach, the seasoned veteran AD at Bernie ISD, along with RJ Marquez. Absolutely. Well, Gold beat Team Black by 17 points that quarter. 
27 to 10 in the third. Team Black's got some work to do as George Ellis weaves it off to Hernandez. Now back to George Ellis again. Jacob Stewart had it to Solon away, but George Ellis gets it back. He throws it underneath for the lay-in for Julian Barone. 58-50. Coach, we had a big comeback by Team Gold in the girls' game, and Team Black trying to do the same here in the boys' game. Well, Team Black, uh, they'll start doubling every possession. Just hey guys, you see that this is a little bit of a quicker lineup, a smaller lineup for Team Black as uh, Coach Hurst looks to apply some defensive pressure here. You're right. Uh, trying to get a... Fade. Few more extra possessions. Fade away there by Baldwin is short. George Ellis brings it up to Barone. And it's knocked away. Still by Team Gold. All the way down the floor to McDonald. He's going to go to the rim and lay it up and in. Josiah McDonald now double digits with 10 points. Well, it's, it's an all-star game. It's who turns the ball over and... The second half, Team Black has had problem handling the ball. Elijah Hernandez with a bucket there for Team Black. Here is a long range three by Gervais Mayweathers. No good. Eight point lead. George Ellis looking for a screen. Starts the attack, kicks it out to that's actually George Ellis from That's Richard. Him. And George Ellis misses the three. You got two three-point shooters there with Richard and George Ellis. But neither one of them able to get a clean shot off. Cooper gets a clean shot here for Team Gold. No good. And Charlie George Ellis gets a rebound. But he lost the handle for a moment, but throws it into the corner. There's another three attempt by Richard. No good. Well, I like what he's he does uh, in all star game when you're distributing the ball like he has. Uh, he's given them a chance. They had their feet set there in the corner. Cooper misses the attack, but he got there. Here's Hernandez from the free throw line. The jumper is short and a nice block out there by Josiah McDaniel. Shoot, excuse me. That is uh, Isaiah Cordona from Brackenridge. This is Josiah McDaniel. Step back three. Uh, no. Possession starting to count here, Coach, for Team Black especially. They are. Stewart gets double team in the reach-in foul, but at what point does each, when you're down eight, can you say that possessions really, really start to matter? It does, uh, but you can tell uh, Coach Hurst, he's just going to stay to the script, make sure that he gets everybody uh, what they burned. Uh, and then just hopefully here in a minute they, they start getting hot. They're only uh, four possessions behind. Lance Beagley's back in for Team Black as well as Kenneth Manuel who catches the pass there. Throws into the right corner. And Harris put it on the floor. Now he goes reverse layup and gets it blocked by Trayvon Williams. That's 6'6", six, six, challenging 6'8". Six, 6'8", eight. Yeah, that, six, eight, that extra length that Team uh, Go has has really helped them out this second half. Team Black in the front court to the right. On the attack, pretty good shot there by Manuel, but he couldn't get it down and out of bounds off Team Gold. Yeah, guys, really impressed with what I've seen from Trayvon Williams. Uh, his size, athleticism, and the paint really causing a lot of these guys to, when they drive in, to think twice about uh, about going up there. No doubt, he he has made all those uh, easy baskets very difficult. Bigly able to dribble out of that yeah. trouble to Harrison now Manuel down on the post jump hook and another block shot for Trayvon Williams there's a great example of what you said on the floor right there 
Yeah, coach, and he went straight up. That was good to see. <laughs> he didn't bring down his arms, went straight up and uh, made a clean block there. Trayvon Williams built straight up. We have a timeout on the floor. We'll break it here. Team Gold with a 60 to 52 lead. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game on KSAT 12. Back to play here at Northside, 60 to 52. Team Gold with the ball in the lead. And wide open, spotted up, a short for three. Rebound and Bigley comes down with it. And his pass is picked off. Three on one, give it back. And a follow, oh, they're gonna count it for Trayvon Williams. And I tell you what, that was a pretty big collision there. It was. And uh, Tyrus Harris took the brunt of that. He fell hard. And then uh, it's like Harris, his feet got a little bit too parallel there, Coach. And he had the idea. He wasn't going to let Trayvon dunk it because I think Trayvon Williams dunks it without the challenge there. Back yeah. to a 10 point lead. I do like how he was strong with the ball and he was able to go ahead and still uh, get this basket and a chance at a three point play. Free throw misses, rebound, comes down to Team Black. Down by 10. Bigley off to Marshall, guns it underneath, and then a foul called. Isaac Martinez, coach, flew up the baseline, and that was a strong pass thrown to him. Yeah, that was going to be hard to catch. That one had some smoke on it. It did. He, he was able to keep it in play. Lance Bigley going to inbound the ball here for Team Black to Marshall. Marshall's in the lane, tried to get it back to Bigley, just lost it out of bounds, and John Hurst about to sub again. I think now you can say the possessions really matter for Team Black. They need oh, they stops. Do. They need stops. And they probably need a couple threes to counter the twos that are coming to team gold more often times than not. McDaniel, McDonald rather, all the way in, nobody stopped him. And Josiah McDaniel now up to 12 points. Here's Regino, stops his dribble, pass bounced, and is stolen by Cooper. Cooper caught about three, instead backs it out to McDonald for a NBA plus yes. three. Shot no good, follow no good. And Trevor Short was trying to go up with it again. Well, the referees are trying not to call a lot of fouls. They've got about three minutes and they're letting them play. And they've done a good job of controlling the game and letting them play. Baseline jumper by McDonald, no good. He has 10 points in this second half. That's been a difference for Team Gold. Bounce pass over to Nakpodia. And he fouled on the floor there. What? I tell you what, Josiah McDonald from Southwest, coach, I think he's inserted himself into the MVP conversation. He and Baldwin both with 12 points, McDonald with 10 of them here in the second half. Yes, uh, Baldwin and McDonald. Hard to single one guy out because it's been a great team effort by Team Gold. It has this second half. Here's McLeod, oh. has a trailer, and he gives it away to Baldwin to take the scoring lead now at 14. Here's a three from Regino missed, and Cooper on the breakaway. Lobs it up. Oh! Yeah. Tried to go with a dunk from McDonald. Couldn't do it. They had the position there, though, Coach. 
Well, now it's starting to look like a, an NBA playoff game now. And so it looks like the, who's going to win is about to be decided. And now both coaches are making sure they get everybody those minutes. Caden Cooper probably could have taken that himself, but he wanted to yeah. see if McDonald could throw down the alley-oop. He got up there for sure. He did. That. Yeah, one-handed. That was nice. Oh, no, no basket for Josiah McDonald. One, two. Josiah 6-1, but he was off the floor on that alley-oop attempt, Coach. He was. You know, we're trying to get out, not to uh, get the, the fifth foul. Don't want to get him on the line. Here he goes again. Yep. Elijah Baldwin. Okay, Elijah can help himself out. He knocks both these down. What a great athlete. Just tremendous. Free throw good. 15 now for Baldwin. He's three for three. From the line. Uh, and I also like to comment about seeing him at the airport and he was headed out to El Paso. And not only does he play both ways, he plays both sides of the ball in football. We've been able to see it tonight. Yeah, guys, very respectful kid in all of my conversations I've had with him. He's always been very respectful. Good kid, good product going out to uh, West Texas. That means a lot, doesn't it? Three by Richards, no good. Here's the fast break. Dish onto the baseline, shot no good. Guess who with the rebound? <laughs> Baldwin tried the behind the back dribble even there. <laughs> Turnover by Team Gold, but as soon as he rebounded it, Baldwin says, I'll just take it behind my yeah. back. I thought he was going to do a spin move and give us another entertainment dunk. John Jackson for three. No, nice rebound though by Hernandez on the baseline, misses the jump shot. Jackson gets it back and gets fouled. Well, and then uh, Coach Cole Gill, he's got an opportunity. Some of those guys that didn't get the, as many minutes, he's going to get them in this last minute. Game is decided. And good opportunity for everybody to, for the parents to get a picture. There's old Charlie. Yep, Charlie George Ellis on your screen. Oh, and a steal. For Team Gold to the rack and lay it up and in. That was Isaiah Cardona from Brackenridge. Well, this is a great opportunity to just brag on San Antonio sports. I, I mean, <laughs> what a awesome event. Uh, I coached in two All-Star games in San Antonio, and of course, it was nothing like this. And hats off to him. Williams misses the three. Then he gets the steal, and then a step back three is good for Isaiah Cardona. He's got the last five points in this game. 73-52. Can you believe Team Black had a seven-point lead coach at the half. They did, and but uh, the gold team had a lot of talent on that side. Uh, Here we go to finish it off, a three. Ah, Why not? Good job, good for him. Cardona scores the last eight points of the game. We'll be back, we'll have the announcements and the trophy plus the impact player of the game here as our post game show Coming up in just a few moments, Team Gold wins it 73 to 52 as they run away with it in the second half. This is the San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game on KSAT 12. You just want to use in-house? Okay.
All right, welcome back everybody. And first of all, everyone in here, let's give a big round of applause to these guys that put on a show to wrap up the inaugural San Antonio Sports High School Boys and Girls All-Star Games. Yeah, joining me now is uh, Coach Hurst here. Coach, unfortunately, did not go the way that you wanted in the end, but still, good time out here with these guys. Oh, it was a great time. We were so lucky. We had Team Black had so many great guys. Great, they came from great programs, obviously great families and great communities. We couldn't be luck, any luckier than to come out and, and work with a group of guys like that. All right, Coach, and what was it like for you guys to see this uh, turnout out here? We got friends, families, people that uh, obviously are close to these guys. Obviously people that uh, maybe taught these guys, coached with them. What's it like for you to see this turn out? Well, it's incredible. And for this to be the, the inaugural event, first time it's been done for basketball, has been fantastic. So many great players. And the turnout, the support for all of these young men have been, has just been tremendous. Again, we, we feel so fortunate just to be a small part of it. Congratulations to all of these men and all of their families. All right, Coach Hurts, thank you very much. Another round of applause for Coach Hurts, giving up his time. Reagan High School right here, representing the Team Black here. Okay, moving on here, we are now about to welcome the President and CEO of San Antonio Sports. She's right here. She's a legend in her own right, everybody. Jenny Carnes, and we're also going to welcome Stan Bonowitz to present our winning team with the Stan Bonowitz Championship Trophy. Jenny. Thank you, RJ. Congratulations to all of our athletes. What an outstanding display of talent. You are all our all-stars. And we are thrilled to wrap up this day four amazing games for the inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game. Thank you to our fans for coming out. I know it's a late night for Sunday, but we're so glad that you're here. On behalf of our team at San Antonio Sports, our mission is to transform this community through the power of sport. This is our 40th anniversary and I can't think of a better way to celebrate this year than kicking off All-Star Basketball. Before I introduce who this um, trophy is named after, I do want to remind everybody that we are hosting the NCAA Final Four, Men's Final Four, right here next year in the Alamo Dome. So this really gets us going one year out. Come on up, San. We've had three amazing coaches that we named our trophies after throughout this day. Our final trophy for the boys 5A, 6A game is named after the great, the legendary Stan Bonowitz, East Central great coach, 708 wins in his 37 year career, one state championship in 1995, and a San Antonio Sports Hall of Famer. The championship trophy, Stan Bonowitz trophy. All right, that's a nice piece of hardware right there. Congratulations to Team Gold getting this done. And the man who led Team Gold to this victory, Coach Kogel, Brennan High School. Coach, just talk about this team's effort and what you saw over the past week, getting to just kind of work with these guys and be able to do all this stuff with these guys. Um, it was just an unbelievable experience being, a, being able to be around these kids for the last week. I mean, they came in every day and, and worked hard and played together and were coachable and just had fun and made, made a really enjoyable process. What changed for you guys in the second half? What was the, uh, the locker room speech at halftime? It would just be confident, play hard, play fast, be confident, uh, show the ball, play the right way. I mean, I think we just came out a little nervous in the first half, but once we found our legs, we played really well from there. Coach, obviously we've seen uh, this sort of development of San Antonio, the guys, the boys, all stars here for, the, for basketball. What does this say about the level of competition in this city for the boys? Us, everything. I mean, these kids came out from great programs, great families, played hard. Um, I mean, made shots, played fast just understood how to play and to come out and, I mean, no NBA All-Star game, right? They came out and competed on both ends. That was awesome to see. All right, Coach Kogo, thank you very much and congratulations again, getting it done for Team Gold. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we are now going to award our player of the game. It is the Impact Player of the Game. And of course here, wondering who it was. Who do you guys think it was? There we go, you guys got it right. It is the pride of the west side right here. John J. Mustang, Elijah Baldwin. Here you go, Elijah, come over here, man. <laughs> All right, Elijah, come over here real quick, man, so we can do a quick uh, interview here. 
First of all, for you guys that don't know, Elijah, he's a two-sport star. He's going to be taking his talents to El Paso, playing at UTEP next year for the UTEP Miners football team. So great job, Elijah. Just talk about this team's effort, man. Um, it started from the coaching staff. They would just bring out the energy. And then my boy Isaiah, in the halftime, he was giving the speeches out. And then he just really bring the energy. So it was really him. He's the energy guy. All right, Elijah finished with 18 points, eight rebounds to lead Team Gold. What was it for you that was working inside, kind of mixing things up inside, outside? Um, my point guard just sharing the ball, giving it to me inside, and then coaches drawing up the plays. Yes, sir. And uh, what does it say about uh, this, the, the state of the guys' basketball here in San Antonio when you get to play with all these guys here, all these ballers? Um, it's great. It feels, it feels very good having some teammates um, be. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to let that one slip. Guys, thanks again. Say congratulations to Elijah Baldwin getting it done here for John Jay High School. Congratulations. He's our team impact player of the game for Team Gold getting it done out here, guys. Congrats. <laughs> All right. That'll do it here. Team Gold takes three out of the four, including the final here in 5a and 6a team gold 73 to 52 winners tonight over team black we thank the entire staff at uh, ksat as well as our entire production crew at texas sports productions and all of our guest analysts as well including you my friend stan Lee. thank you bobby great job as always and hopefully we can do it again someday soon we'll see you soon thank you bobby all right folks the night beat is next Thank you for joining us today.